<laughs> we work, it's unbelievable the growth that's happened and it's given us, in my view, a false sense of a lower vacancy rate in many major office markets. Like what, Peter, what are you seeing with WeWork? I mean, I, it's fueling new yeah. office development. Like, is, yeah. should we be worried about uh, WeWork? It, it, it's a huge growing force, but what we've learned is, is it, once upon a time when the markets weren't as strong, the you know, landlords were giving out their space. They were not only taking in WeWork, but they were paying for the TI. So you know, it became something where it, people started to go, wow, they're actually really successful. So the automatic question is, well, why can't we do it ourselves? So more and more of the big Canadians and some of the other big global owners are saying, maybe we start our own WeWork type division. Why are we doing this through a WeWork? All right. So you maybe you 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 come at it differently now. So we're through that stage where vacancy is a concern. Toronto is the tightest office market office market vacancy in North America. New York's very tight. You don't have to do these deals. London, England, you start to see with Brexit some cracks, some spaces coming up. Do you do more WeWork? Maybe. So if there's pressure, I think you go into that direction. But we're at the point where you know, to make it work, there's enough flexibility and there's enough downtime in WeWork. They have to collect such a big rent. I think tenants are going to look eventually at their bottom line. They're going to say, do we need this flexibility? Do we need to pay this much rent to make it work for WeWork? And I think that model, you know, may be at its peak right now. Armin or Joe, do you have WeWork in your portfolio? <clears throat> Not yet. We're dealing with them in Denver and, and here in Toronto. The general rule of thumb we get from the capital markets uh, brokers is that you shouldn't put them in for more than 25% of your building. If, if so, they'll, your cap rate moves up and your value comes down because they don't offer a covenant. Uh, but it's a, it's a good concept. They've become a bit of a cult. They have a following. They do sublease in, in large scale to and the, the, not the Amazon, but the Googles of the world maybe on a short-term basis. And so far, they're paying the rent. They're not in default anywhere. But the flip side is they don't offer a covenant either. And they really, they compete with you as a landlord. So they take space in your building. And then they, all of a sudden, you're leasing against them. So it's, it's a bit of a flawed model in some point. When, uh, King said, did you have yeah, a King, said, King said does have a little bit of WeWork exposure, yes. Um, and I do give them credit for being a disruptor. But I completely agree with what Peter is saying. Landlords are now saying maybe you know, this is something that we can do ourselves. Now, WeWork has built a bit of a cult following, so you don't, won't have that out of the gate. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think that cult following will only go so far when the individual tenants have to pay more for the benefit of being part of a WeWork club when you can get some of the other benefits for much cheaper if the landlords start doing it themselves um, well and more economically. <coughs>